Data is leaking everywhere. After it was reported that Facebook had half a billion people's data leaked in 2019, now we can add another half a billion people with LinkedIn. The latest one to join the flood is Clubhouse with 1.3 million users data leaked. Why does this keep happening and is it as bad as it sounds? Well, we're being hacked. The number is actually 533 million. How bad is it that it's okay to just round off the number by more than 30 million? So apparently this happens all the time, we just don't know it. Ugh. All of these data started appearing on the dark web where hackers can post data they just stole and scammers can then purchase that data. In the case of this half a billion users data leak that everyone is talking about, we're still fuzzy as to how the data was collected, but we know it was leaked around 2019. One of the reasons why it's fuzzy is because Facebook itself obviously is very quiet when they get a data breach or when they get hacked. When you give your phone number and email address to Facebook, only they're supposed to see it. And of course, anybody that you allow as a friend on Facebook also. You know, like that guy you met at a party 10 years ago for 10 minutes. Hackers exploit weaknesses in their system to gather the data. A big one is Instagram, which obviously links with Facebook, especially when you first set it up. You can either type all your details manually or you can just import everything from Facebook and it will just populate everything automatically. Apparently, hackers were able to exploit that and match phone numbers to people's real name. Facebook was then quite clever about it as they fixed the issue and then they posted the quietest press release about it. Oops, sorry guys. And this was after the Cambridge Analytica scandal where they purchased data from Facebook and then tried to predict or influence the 2016 election. Having the actual data of what people like and who or what they follow is a pretty powerful and valuable tool. So Facebook's public image in terms of privacy was already bad, but these latest events made it even worse. In the case of LinkedIn, the website wasn't actually hacked. Uh, instead, it was an aggregation of data from a number of companies and websites. And then I'm guessing it was paired with publicly available data from LinkedIn. So here it's what's called data scraping. Data scraping is a technique in which a computer program extracts data from human readable output coming from another program. Basically, instead of ones and zeros, data scraping gathers data and then packages neatly into something that a person can read. Of course, LinkedIn also had a press release just saying, hey, that's not nice. That also happened to Clubhouse, one of the latest hot social media app. Uh, it's basically audio seminars and you can just join and listen to smart people or not so smart people. <sighs> 1.3 million users, which is a significant portion for them, has had the data scraped. So the media reported this as a data leak because it's a more dramatic headline, but Clubhouse was quick to respond and say that this was a misleading headline because they were not actually hacked or breached and that this was all public data. Kind of bad timing for them as they're trying to get another round of funding to value them at $4 billion. So basically another, hey, this is not cool, but it's not our fault. And it seems they can't do anything about it. And this is going to keep happening because this basically funds the scamming industry. There was nearly $20 billion scammed in 2020 in the US alone. So that amount of data is extremely valuable to these scamming call centers because out of a million robocalls, they might only get just a thousand call back. And out of these, they might just scam 10 or 20 people. You've probably received those calls before, and if you're not too gullible, you know that a government entity or a giant corporation like Microsoft calling you from a cell phone is really fishy, so you can just ignore the call or just hang up. Or sometimes it's an ad pop-up telling you that you caught a virus. But for people who are not familiar with technology, especially older people, they fall for it all the time, and so scammers will keep doing this because the financial reward is just too great. So you could think that the only way to stop those data leaks is by making someone's phone numbers and names worthless, by spreading awareness on those scams. A phone scam is actually the more harmless scenario that could happen with your data. Full-blown identity theft is probably the worst that could happen because it's really hard to clean a record after. Identity theft is not a joke, Jim. This also raises the question of privacy. Data scraping is annoying, but it's not as bad as actual hacking. British Airways had a bad one a few years ago where full credit card details were hacked. When you give your details to a company, you trust that company. And if they get hacked and they basically haven't guarded your data correctly, they should at least tell you about it so that you could look out for fraud. But Facebook isn't even going to do that. Their excuse is that because they're not sure whose data was leaked, then they don't know who to alert. Okay, how about everyone? So instead, what you can do is go to haveibeenpawned.com. I'll put the link in the description below and you can put your phone number or email address and then they'll tell you if you've been part of a breach and which one specifically. Apple is on a mission with privacy and they're trying to suppress the data sharing between apps, which is a good thing because the least amount of places that your data is at, the least likely it is to leak. That was a mouthful. So let me know in the comments below if you've been compromised and whether we should just accept this in this day and age uh, or if these companies should be held accountable for this. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. It's free. See ya.